super exciting today. It's part four of our five-part series on the Google ecosystem. Well, actually, the five-part series has now grown into a seven-part series because there's so much to cover, but today's is awesome. We are talking about Google Drive. Cue the music. Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. Now, as I said, this is the fourth of our series of Google Basics, where we look at the Google ecosystem, and today we are diving into Google Drive, which is the online storage component of the Google ecosystem. But Drive is more than that. Drive is two, maybe three different things to us. First of all, it is online storage, much like Dropbox or Box or other online file storage systems. Google Drive allows us to store all of our documents within it. And we have actually 15 gigabytes of storage space within Google Drive, which is pretty darn generous when you consider that, say, Dropbox starts out with two gigabytes of free storage. Of course, you can purchase an upgrade if you start running out of storage, uh, and you we will have links in the description on how you can go about upgrading your storage should you choose. But you're probably gonna be happy with 15 gigabytes for a little while because that's a lot of storage. However, one caveat is with Google Drive, you share that 15 gigabytes of storage with some of your other Google accounts. So you share it with all of your docs and sheets, all of your word processor spreadsheets, presentation, anything you create with the Google apps that are also part of Drive is it counts against your storage, as does any stored email that you have from Gmail. And as well, you can also have to use some of that space to store some of your photos if you're using Google Photos. But there's a caveat on the caveat as far as the photos goes. Uh, and we'll be talking about photos in a subsequent episode of this Google Basics series. But with photos, if you store your photos in Google standard resolution, it doesn't count against your storage. It's only if you store high resolution photos that it counts against your storage. Whew, I'm glad we got over all of that. But let's take a look at Google Drive so we can understand how it all fits together. And when I said it's really two things, Here's where we see it. If I go into the Google Apps menu and open Google Drive from the Apps menu, I'm brought into a browser window that allows us to organize all the different aspects of our drive. Now, this is a pretty much brand new account that I've just been playing around with a little bit. And I've got a couple of untitled documents uh, that I've just been kind of setting up, but it starts with pretty much a blank canvas when you start with Google Drive. But if you take a look over here and you click on New, here you see that you can manage all of your, you can create folders and you can upload files, etc. But you also have access to Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides, as well as more here. This is the other part of Google Drive. This is Google's productivity toolkit. These are, this is our word processor. Docs is a word processor, which is free. Sheets is a spreadsheet. Uh, slides is a presentation tool, much like PowerPoint. And then we see in the, in the dropdown, we've also got forms and drawings and access to maps and sites and, and Jamboard, which I'm not even sure I've ever even looked at. There's so many things in the Google ecosphere. They're always adding. But the ones that you're going to be most interested in are, of course, I think Google Docs, and we'll start with that uh, because this is a really full-featured word processor. Google Docs I use for doing all the writing that we do in our business now. I write all of our blog posts in it, all of the projects we work on. I work in Google Docs because it is a full featured word processor. And it's got, if we take a look here in the tools, we in, in the menu, sorry, it's got all of the main features that you'd expect to find in a, in a word processor. Now, it's not quite as robust as a Microsoft Word, no, but it's free and it's online and available to us at all times. And I, the words are the same. The words work out the exact same. And you can do most of the formatting that you would do in a, in a, in a dedicated application. But that is not the main reason that I use this tool. Free is good, but free is not everything. Accessibility is great. I mean, the, the fact that it's easy to access online and that it's ubiquitous. I can work on the same document on multiple computers just by signing into my Google account. That is very important. But the most important aspect of this particular tool, actually of all of the docs tools, is found on the top right-hand side of the document screen here, which is the share button. I can take this document and I can share it with other members of my team. 
by sharing the document with other members of the team, I turn it into a collaborative document, which means they can edit the document even in real time. If I am writing on a document and somebody else is editing that document, I can see their edits happening in real time. And we have all of the acceptance and, uh, and rejection rules as far as editing documents so that you can make suggestions and then accept the suggestions. So you can do full, proper, full on editing of a document and work through it in a collaborative approach with a team, all included here for free with Google Drive. Uh, that to me is, is one of the biggest benefits of this particular tool. And we've got that for word processing, but we also have it for spreadsheets. We also have it for presentation tools and we can even create forms, etc. Now we have done a lot of videos on this topic over the years. So in the document, in the blog post here and in the links below, I'm gonna make sure that I add links to showing you how we use Google Documents as a collaborative word processor. We did a great video on that. I'm gonna show you an introduction to Google Forms, which is another one of the basic tools that's built into the Google Docs or into the Google Apps, which allows you to create online forms, which are mind blowing as far as their flexibility and the fact that they're free is again an amazing feature. Uh, so we'll, I'll make sure that I link to all of the different relevant videos so you can dive a little bit deeper into each of these aspects. But today's video is kind of an overview, so I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty details of using these tools. So this is the document side of Google Drive. But if we go back here into the main menu, we can also manage, uh, let's here bring out the menu, pop out the menu. We can also go in and click on the drive location and we can also here choose exactly what documents we're sharing and, and how we wanna organize those documents. Because here's the thing about online file sharing is you don't necessarily always wanna have all of the documents available on all of your devices. For example, if you've got a lot of very large files that you're editing, say video files, you don't necessarily wanna store them in your online storage solution because they take up a lot of space and they get mirrored on each computer in the system. So you wanna be able to organize exactly what files you share and which ones you don't. And you can do all of that through these menus on the side. And one of them is the, for the different computers. These are the different computers that are attached and synced to your Google Drive system. Now I've just set this one up brand new, so there's no other computers syncing to it, but if I log in with another computer into my Google account, the Google account that we set up way back in episode one, which I'm still using here, if you log in with a second computer, say a notebook computer, it will then give you access to all of the same information, begin syncing uh, all of the documents that are in Google Drive on that other computer. So that's how we end up having ubiquitous access to all of our files is we've got them synced from computer to computer into the cloud. So no matter which device you're on, you have access through Google Drive. That's kind of one of the benefits of it. And it'll take you a little bit of time to figure out what you want to share and what you don't want to share. Uh, but that's basically how it's all managed. So you'll spend quite a bit of time in this particular interface here, figuring out how to get around and how to create new documents, and then finally creating some sort of organizational structure for your Google Drive account. But the bottom line is, once you've set up a Google Drive account, you have access to it on all of your devices and you can choose exactly which files live in Google Drive that you want to share. And if you want to share files with others, you can also share the files by creating a, a, a file sharing link. So let me do that. Actually, let me load. I think I should do that at least once. I'm going to upload a file to Google Drive. And let's say I'm just going to upload this spreadsheet right here, which is a spreadsheet that I have. So this is actually a Microsoft Outlook spreadsheet, so it, but it was sent to us from a, from a client. So here we have, this has now been uploaded. So how do I find it? Well, if I go into my drive, I have here that spreadsheet available to me right here. So if I click on this, I will open it, but I can also choose to get a shareable link for this document. Watch this. I create a shareable link, which then copies this link so that I can now send this link to somebody else and I can share this document with them. So all of the same things that we do in Dropbox, we can do in Google Drive. I'd say graphically speaking, it isn't quite as appealing as some of the other tools as far as how it lays out all of our files and all of our structure, uh, but you'll very quickly learn the nuances of using Google Drive as you spend time with it. But it's an important part of the Google ecosystem because now when you go into your email and you open your email and you create and compose a new email, if you wanna attach a document to that email, watch what happens when I go and attach file, watch what one of my options are. 
My options are, oh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong place. If I go here and I think it's attached, there it is. If I insert a file from Drive rather than attaching a document from my computer, I can attach the spreadsheet that I just created here. I can attach that as an attachment in the email. So I have instant access through the integration between Gmail and Google Drive to be able to share files. As well, of course, anytime I share, save a document in Gmail, that document or that attachment is saved in Google Drive. So we see how it kind of fits now as the storage layer, the storage and really sharing layer for the entire Google account. Google Drive, it is a, a great addition. It's some, it works in the background most of the time. It's not something you think about top of mind all the time as far as the storage side goes, uh, but it is an in integral part of the entire Google ecosystem. And that brings us to next video, which we'll be posting next week, which is on Google Photos. Oh. You're going to want to stick around for that. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, make sure that you subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos in this Google series or any of our other videos for that matter. I look forward to your comments and suggestions below. Would love to hear what your thoughts are and if this video is indeed helping you out. Till next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.